Welcome to Two Minutes to Target and part two of our Science of Recoil series. Now, if you watched part one, you saw that we took a look at all the forces that act on a rifle during a shot, including the recoil response forces that you push back in. And then we went out to the range and we compared shooting with a soft shoulder to shooting with a hard shoulder. And you can see when you do that, that the hard shoulder puts a lot more recoil force back into the rifle, causing it to jump around a lot. And when we took a close look at the legs of the bipod, you can see that the one with the soft shoulder just moves backward and forward, whereas the hard shoulder moves side to side. And it's that side to side motion that we're going to take a look at in this video. We're going to say why it happens and what you can do to stop it. In part one, we talked about getting your weight behind the rifle so that your recoil response forces go straight down the length of the rifle when you shoot. And you can see from the position of this guy that he's got his weight behind the rifle. And when we extend the length of the line of the rifle through his body, it goes right along his length, and that allows him to put his forces straight back in. Now, what I find is most people who are new to precision shooting, even people that have been shooting their entire lives, don't line up like this. They tend to line up more like this, with their bodies opposite their strong side. I did it, and you can see from some of these pictures of the same day at the range that other people do it too. Look at this guy. He's right-handed, and he's positioned to the left side. And look at that line of the rifle. It's way off to his right side. And here's another example. And this guy, same thing. He's right-handed, he's to the left of the rifle, and the line of the rifle is off to his right. So what's the impact of this? Well, the biggest thing is that the forces that you're putting back into the rifle are no longer going straight down its length. They're coming in at an angle. And one of the first things you learn in engineering school is that a force at an angle like this is the same as having two forces coming in like these. So let's look at the rifle in the top and in the side view like we were doing before in part one. Now let's put in the force of the shot, let's put in the force of your shoulder pushing back against the rifle, and then remember we've got this little sideways force that's coming in because you're off center. And to make this look semi-normal, let's go ahead and put in like a bench, something underneath the rifle, and a rear bag so it's not just floating there. And then since we saw in the first video how the forward and backward forces react to each other, let's go ahead and take those out, and let's just look at this sideways force pushing in. Now, what's stopping it from moving? Well, you've got friction around the bipod, and you've got a little bit of friction, a little bit of force acting because of the rear bag. But that rear bag is kind of squishy. It doesn't really stop things from moving. It just sort of inhibits it a little bit. So since it doesn't play a huge part, we're going to take that out as well. Now, your shoulder will present somewhat of an opposing force, but remember that your body is shifted. It's turned, and so those shoulders, well, they don't quite provide as much as they would if they were flat and perpendicular to the rifle. It's almost like that sideways force is pushing downhill. So your shoulder helps, but it's certainly not going to stop the back end of that rifle from moving. So now let's shoot the rifle and stop it mid-shot. And what happens? Well, if you've got a hard shoulder like we showed in that shot at the beginning, then those bipod legs are leaving the table. And the forces of friction that they provided are gone. Now the only thing you've got left is this little force pushing against the back of the rifle. And what's that going to do? It's going to rotate the rifle something like this. If you want to see this in action, here's a shot I took through my scope. I'm lined up to the left of the rifle, and after I fire, it's pointed exactly where I just showed in the diagram, to the left of the target. Now let's go back and look again at that hard shoulder shot from the beginning, and look at the bipod leg before the shot and after the shot, and it moved to the right. Now I was lined up to the left of the rifle. Why did it move to the right? Well, let's take a look at this. And to do this, we'll go into my somewhat crappy version of the front view of the rifle. And when the shot is fired, remember that the bipod legs are lifting off the table. And then remember we have the side force pushing on the stock that's causing the rotation, and that's going to cause the bipod legs to shift to the left. Now this little sideways force doesn't just act in this top view, it also acts in the front view, and it pushes against the stock somewhere around here. And remember from part one, when you push against something away from the center of rotation, that causes angular momentum, that causes a twist. And let's follow along with the shot, and you can see the twist, and you can see that left bipod leg hit the table. Well, it's moving sideways, it's hitting sideways, so it's going to bounce back to the other side, and then it's finally going to settle down. So it really did move to the left, but then the combination of having a hard shoulder and not being lined up behind the rifle caused the rifle to rotate. That caused it to then hit one leg and bounce back to the other side. 
So in part one, we showed you the impact of having a hard shoulder, and here we're showing you what happens when you don't line up behind the rifle. And boy, when you put the two of those together, they really cause chaos with recoil. Well, that's all we've got time for for now, so come back and look for part three for more good stuff on the science of recoil.